Welcome, Greek U Nations, episode number 319 of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Eilon, CEO of Greek University. I'm a speaker and a two-time author. Our second book is called From Letters to Leaders, Redefining New Member Education and Leveraging Belonging to Eliminate Hazing. That is available now on Amazon. Go and pick up that book today. We call these episodes the Fraternity Foodie Podcast because there is nothing like great food to bring college students together. Fun fact, in high school, TV production was actually a class that I took. It blew my mind in terms of future possibilities. We had a full video studio in the high school, and every student taking the class would take turns directing their own commercial. It was definitely the class with the most fun involved. And to be honest with you, I'm a bit jealous that our next guest has created his own documentary. Gene Rollins Adam Jr. is an independent filmmaker who has recently released his first documentary film. It's called Finding Betty, a new face in the world of fighting injustice. Gene's passion for the case of Betty Wilson knows no bounds. Welcome to the show, Gene. Uh, pleasure to be here. Great to see you. Uh, it's great to see you again, and I can't wait to jump into this topic because I got to be honest with you, I have so much to learn about Betty Wilson, and I know that there is nobody on planet Earth that knows more than you do. So I just can't wait to jump into this. This is going to be really fun. <laughs> now, you decided on Albright College for your undergraduate experience. So our listeners want to know, why was Albright your choice? So frankly, it was... Just I just wanted to get to get away. Um, you know, I'm from New Jersey and it was the only college that I got accepted to out of state. And I wanted to pursue the dorm lifestyle. Um, you know, I got accepted to Rutgers, um, Fairleigh Dickinson, Seton Hall University, and they were all within maybe like 20 minutes of home. And I was just like, no, I need I need to have like, you know, that independent experience of myself. And uh, you know, I did get some scholarship money to go there and then um you know, that's what I pursued. So I ended up doing four and a half years at Albright because uh, I had one extra semester because I didn't complete everything on time. Naturally, that little super senior area, I like to say, you know, because I was uh, a little young for my grade, I just graduated on time instead of uh, <laughs> I when I was it. supposed to. I totally get it. I mean, as somebody who was born in Manhattan and, uh, you know, my family was real close. There's plenty of colleges and universities where we grew up, um, but I needed to get away a little bit. So I chose University <laughs> of Buffalo, which was like the furthest college that I could find on the map. And it's literally an eight hour drive from New York City. So I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> so I totally get it. I totally yeah. makes sense to me. The interesting thing about you is you have a history of breakdancing. You were with the scandalous crew of Albright College. How did you get started with breakdancing? Um, so I was like a little gymnast when I was younger, right? And um, I used to like have like some dance classes here and there, but like um, I, I was like passionate about learning and my parents, they were kind of opposed to it. And then um, when I went to college, I wanted to like continue just flipping like just to make sure that I could keep doing that in my life and then I started like you know looking at things up on YouTube like how to's and one thing led to another then I just started like you know being the little b-boy at the parties and whatnot and <laughs> and then sophomore year um uh, it was like me my roommate and uh, another friend of mine um we couldn't find a place to practice um where we usually practice so we went to like uh this these basketball courts area and there were some uh, international students who were also like playing basketball at the time. and we just started practicing on the other side of the court and <laughs> they dropped the basketballs walked to the other side of the court and they were like we want to do this too <laughs> <laughs> so next thing you know we're performing at like halftime games um school shows parties and things like that and like this was something that was like like I didn't go to college and be like yo I'm gonna start this little breakdance crew it just all happened like by you know the look at the draw and then uh you know um now I have some lifetime friends who live in Japan Korea and all overseas and you know my college roommate <laughs> we're both having babies I'm due January he's due February and yeah, life 
life continues, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. I think that's amazing. And you're also a former rapper from the Peanut Gallery, Party of Five. When did you start rapping? <laughs> I started rapping after after I graduated college, you know. Um, I went to college for uh, political science and communications. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to rap. <laughs> Oh so <laughs> it was mainly, you know, the inspiration from um, some of my friends from home um, who were just really talented. And, you know, like I met somebody else while I was in college who rapped, who was also really talented. And um, there was somebody from the college that I met who was just kind of like dabbling in it a little bit. And then one time we were all at the studio and then we met the fifth person who was, uh, you know, the person in the studio before us. And, um, you know, um, naturally it was mainly the inspiration that I got from the other guys who were in the group, Johnny and Flea, and they ended up like, you know, like just kind of inspiring me to get in the studio my own self. And then um, Party of Five didn't last that long, but Flea stayed along with us um, and we became the Peanut Gallery. Um, we made our own album. It's out on uh, Spotify, Tales from the Basement, um, because... This is where we made it. <laughs> this is this is where we built the studio. This is where uh, you know, um, you know, we made our own beats and uh, you know, it took maybe about a two year project, but we we made our own album. That's amazing. I just I love how these like chance meetings turned into something really big for you. And I think that's what college is all about, is that Oh yeah. You know, you know, you can go online, you know, and, and you can get an education, but the reality is the benefit of going to a college is getting into a new place, meeting new people, and then all these chance meetings, they take your life in some direction that in a million years, I'm sure you never thought you were going to be breakdancing or rapping, <laughs> but here you are I mean, doing your thing. So I just, I love how those chance meetings just turned into a whole new venue for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love it. And you've also been in the U.S. Army now for over eight years. You even served as squad leader responsible for nine soldiers. I mean, talk to us about your experience in the U.S. Army. What has that experience been like for you? So so I'm a reserve soldier. So I'm a, I'm a weekend warrior. I do one week in a month and, you know, two weeks in the uh, summer. Um, and naturally... Um, I just wanted to get a feel for that environment after college. So, you know, I took my chances and, you know, went to the recruiter's office and was like, hey, like, you got any room for me? And they were like, yep, <laughs> sign the paper. <laughs> wow. um, you know, after I did my initial training, I came home and I just, you know, I have done literally like U.S. Army work for eight years just consistently. Mm -hmm. And. You know, uh, I made sergeant in uh, 2018, and then you know, like that's when your responsibilities get a little get get a little more higher, and you're placed into like you know whether it be a squad leader. You know, um, E6 is like a um, plat uh, platoon sergeant, and you know, so you get responsibility as soldiers, and you know, you have to make sure they're good on you know like medical, dental, things like that, and just you know, like make sure you not only lead but you're also like uh uh like someone to be there for your soldiers you know if they just need anything whether it just be life related or things like that or just helping them get from point a to point b you know that's uh you know <laughs> something that i actually can say that's you know like one of the choices that i like making in my life and you know um I'm in the point of debating, you know, whether to stay in, finish it out or not, but <laughs> we'll see. Nice, nice, man. That sounds like a fun adventure. And obviously you got a lot out of it. So it seemed like it was a good decision on your part eight years ago. And here you are, you have some additional choices to make. And I'm sure whatever you decide, it's all going to work out. Everything's going to be fine. So, uh, so good for you, man. I like it. I like it. Now let's talk about this movie because you are the current owner of a film publication. It's on Amazon Prime. It's on iTunes, Apple TV, YouTube, Tubi, Google Play. It's called Finding Betty. This is a documentary film that was created through independent research. And you successfully conducted and executed the film development 
and the production for this film. I'm sure many of our listeners are curious, how do you go about executing the film development and production if they have an idea that they want to bring to one of these platforms? So the easiest way to answer that question is if you want it, <laughs> find it, do it, and follow through. That's simple. Like you have to, you have to learn like the regulations, the guidelines, what type of cameras to use, um, how to properly conduct um, a quality control check, which is probably the most excruciating process. Um, you have to learn like these things about you know what it is they need it's not necessarily telling the story you know the film you can have a film put out that isn't that good you know um but as long as you follow through with the regulations the guidelines and it's fitting for them they'll take the movie and then you know like you got to film on you know one of these platforms you know make sure you uh you know you got to have the right team um you know i wasn't it, 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 this wasn't an independent alone project. It was, you know, with the help of Beverly Boy Productions. Um, it was a help of the people who decided to show up and be a part of the film. Um, you know, getting the interview with a prisoner, you know, like over the phone who you can't call. You have to wait for them to call you in order to like, and you know, when this was like, the entire interview with her took maybe about two hours mm -hmm. and um that took i'd say i think she first called at nine in the morning and i don't think we were done mainly with the interview until like five in the evening and that was just because you know like she's in prison there's certain things she had to attend to like you know like chow um head count things like that and so like we just had to <laughs> go with the flow and get things done that way um, but easily the one thing I would say is like, if you want the film that you want, make sure you want it, follow through and, you know, just make sure you know everything, the ins and outs, because like any one thing that can happen can get you dinged and, you know, you got to start all over again or whether it's not you know, like the editing phase, but, you know, just make sure you have everything that you need before you hit the editing phase too. Yeah, getting the right equipment sounds like, uh, you know, a very good starting point because Lord knows nobody wants to start all over again once you start filming. Um, so, all right, that's, so tell us. That's why I got the production company. Yeah, exactly. The production company, <laughs> they, they don't mess up like that. So, yeah. all right, so tell us about Finding Betty. What is the case all about? And why should our listeners be watching it right now, whether it be on Tubi or Amazon Prime? Why should they watch this? So thing about the case of Betty Wilson is the significance and the importance of it. You know, um, in the film, right, I take five people who have either never heard of the case or knew very little of the case, you know, just basically because they knew me. And um, I presented my research to them. And it's obviously, if you watch the film, you understand this is an injustice. But my thing is, it's much bigger than that. You know, um, there's, once you present all this information, you have to question, you know, 30 years later, why is this woman still in jail? You know, how come her appeals were exhausted? You know, how come the people who played these games in the courts basically got away with it? And, you know, um, a little bit, uh, you know, like I think the most important part of Betty's case was that her twin was also accused of the same crime, had the same evidence, testimony, accusations, and was acquitted. And in the process of her acquittal, proved that Betty Wilson was innocent. So you have, frankly, like an entire case that is telling the truth and disproving everything about Betty's case. And Betty was convicted. And then 30 years later, she's still serving this prison sentence for the state alleging that she had someone hired to kill her husband. So 
you have to really see the underlinings about what really took place, you know, like what games the, you know, state play, you know, they brought this black man from California to testify in Betty's case. What was the reason? They wanted to show the jury that she had this extramarital affair, even though she was in an open relationship with her husband. So there's just like, that's just one of the factors. There's so many other factors that I present in the movie that are very important in understanding why this case is so important in its significance. And then at the very end, you know, like, I take the, I gave the people who were at the, who came to the film showing, well, to the film parts, to the film presentation, but they were like in the film. Um, I, I just on the fly interview, like, I just wanted to know what they learned and like what they took from it. And they were able to understand that it was just more than an injustice and that's part of the film as well. So for all the people who are listening right now, I mean, obviously we're going to all go and watch the movie. We'll go check it out on Tubi, on Amazon Prime, wherever you watch your movies. But how can our listeners get involved to help out in this case? So most important thing is get educated on the case of Betty Wilson. But you have to turn that education into action. So... Public awareness is very important. You have to get to know Betty Wilson and understand her story and then continue telling the story. You also can't be afraid to go to the top of the line. You know, um, if you're in college, you know, you don't have to be afraid to go to a local politician and say, hey, we need to do something about this. Reach out to media journalists. If you know a celebrity who might be interested in taking this up, Hey, listen, <laughs> I just watched this movie and you might want to see uh, what's actually going on. Um, and it doesn't have to be like something super big, you know, like if you have an idea to like fundraise an event or um, organize a rally or some kind of meeting, do that. And, you know, if you're affiliated with some type of organization and you want to have like a watch event and you wanna invite students or something, and you wanna, <laughs> if you wanna charge money and serve food and other stuff, I promise you, I'm not going to blow your phone up. <laughs> and I'm not Disney, this is my film. Like, And if you're doing something that you wanna do to help uh, and you're making money from it, I don't care. <laughs> so, the only thing that I would ask is that you let me know so that I can help promote, you know, what it is you're doing. Um, so there's plenty of ways to get involved. You know, you contact your, you know, like uh, ACLU, um, other nonprofit organizations, um, National Organization of Women, the Innocence Project, the Innocence Network, the Sentencing Project. These are all organizations where one person telling them, hey, this is something you got to pay attention to, won't necessarily, you know, they'll kick it out the door. Five, 10, 20, 50 people start sending them in. They, they'll be like, oh, listen, I think we've got to check this out and understand really what's going on. Yeah. And there's just any type of way, you know, uh, from journalists, politicians, uh, organizing events and things like that. Get out there and, you know, follow. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's important for college students to be activists and to look out for cases like this. Clearly, there was an injustice that happened here with Betty Wilson. But, I mean, more than just the Betty Wilson case and this particular injustice, I mean, do you as a person, I mean, do you question the integrity of the entire justice system today? Yes, and that, I, I just have to answer that like profoundly. Like that is a hard yes. And the reason for that is because you take this research and you look at the case of Betty Wilson and I, I say this in the film, 
if this can happen to her, it can happen to you, it can happen to someone you love. Like, this is a real woman who has family who have been waiting like 30 years for something to take place, um, you know, and more so as far as the aspect of questioning the integrity of the justice system. In her interview, this actually didn't like come up in like the film. There's certain things about like people in positions of the courts, like judges, district attorneys, these are elected people. So they're gonna do what they wanna do to get votes. Not necessarily what the Constitution tells them to do. You know, for example, like, I bring up certain things about, like, Brady violations, ex partes, and a whole bunch of other things in the film. And Betty brought them up in her appeals, and they're, like, clear cut. But then these people, they know that if they're going to be the person who gives Betty Wilson a retrial, people aren't going to like that, and they're going to want to get them out of office. So they did what they had to do and made a reason as to why her appeal was denied. So, you know, if you're an innocent person, you go on trial for something you didn't do and you get convicted, first of all, <laughs> that's already messed up. But then the fact that you have to worry about who are the people making these decisions as you follow through the rest of your sentence, in Betty's case, life, no parole, you have to really question like, what's the agenda or what's the take? And it's just, is it just to get votes, you know? Like, or is there something like more meaningful behind it? Um, so I wasn't like as much, you know, I used to have faith in like, you know, like, some type of things, you know, like in the courts, but like this kind of really makes you see it from a whole new perspective. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, you know, I definitely want to check out this movie and uh, really just kind of dive into this whole thing. I mean, this is just fascinating. Are there other ideas of independent films that you're working on or you're thinking about currently for the future? So my goal for 2023 is actually to start a production company of my own. And that's because I kind of stumbled into this whole ordeal like, oh, like I know how to get movies on Amazon and Tubi and X, Y, and Z. And, you know, like I did this one on my own. If I actually had like, you know, like production crew, uh, you know, I, I would, you know, like I could do it at will. You know, I could just wake up one day and be like, you know, hey, let's write a script and like do something and you know, and probably have like film done that month if that that if that's the case. Cause you know, like I I'm I don't plan on having like films that are on like, you know, Sony or like, you know, that level, because those take years. But you know, um actually one of the one of my my main goals, like once things kick and run, is to actually get like a TV series on the on the actual story of Betty Wilson, because she has lived like in a negative aspect, an incredible life, like just world of wonders. So yeah, there are other ideas of like films and, you know, other things that I do want to do as far as the, as far as the near future. Good for you, man. I love it. So I'm definitely going to be in contact. I got a few ideas I want to run by you. We're going to see if we can get this hey. production company <laughs> off and running. <laughs> hey, I, I'm, I'm with that. <laughs> I love it. All right. So listen, we do love good food here at the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. And I know New Jersey, I mean, that's that's where you're born. That's where you're hanging out. So when you're in Rose, the capital Jersey, of the world. Yeah. Oh, and you're looking for a great bite to eat. Where do you go for food? Oh, so I go to the grocery store and I, get a recipe <laughs> and I will make something in the kitchen. Um, but, you know, if I just have to go out and like, you know, I have like a number one spot. There's this place in uh, Westfield. It's called uh, La Casa Pizzeria and favorite pizzas from there. And it's extra cheese with pepperoni and hot peppers. And it's phenomenal. It's <laughs> it's my go-to whenever I'm at home. 
See, you and I are very much alike. The pepperoni and hot peppers all day long. I mean, oh, man. And it's like magic about that. And, you know, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, but I was born in Manhattan. So I know what good pizza is, and I can't find yeah. it anywhere in Nashville. And so every time I go back, I can't find it in Pennsylvania. You know, I I, I got to go to the uh, the local Pizza Hut and hope that they have, you know. Oh, it's not the same, though. You no, know, it's not. It's not the same. I mean, but it's, but it's, it's better than the local shops that they have. <laughs> I guess. I don't know, man. It's just it makes me very depressed. So I know I'm going to be speaking at uh, Rowan in New Jersey um, at the end of January. So I can't wait to get there so I can get some good pizza. Because, man, oh, man, I'm, I'm missing the pizza. I'm missing the bagels. I mean, it, they just don't make it like they do with the Northeast. Let let me know when you're there, man. If, if, if I have the time, I'll shoot up and I'll stop in. Yeah, man. Yeah, you definitely would enjoy some of these talks. It's uh, it's definitely fun. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of fun with the college students. They just love the programs. And uh, I just love getting around. But it does give me an excuse to get some good pizza. So maybe we'll check out your pizza place while we're there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if our listeners, if they want to learn more about this documentary, uh, it's called Finding Betty, or they want to contact you to speak about this case, or they want to let you know about the event that they're holding so that way you can promote it. Where should they go to connect with you? So got a few places. So my Twitter, uh, it's at J R underscore at the number two. So underscore J at J R underscore Adam two. <laughs> and you can find me there. You'll find an attached, um, you'll find an attached uh, link in my bio to my personal Twitter and follow at your own risk, you know, um, but, you know, if you feel, you know, you want to follow my personal Twitter, you know, feel free to do that. Um, you can find me on Instagram. It's at call underscore me underscore Orlando. So it's call me Orlando underscores in the middle, no underscores to start. Um, and the quickest and fastest way to get a hold of me in relation to the case of Betty Wilson. If you have a Facebook, you go to the page, it's called Free Betty Wilson Project. And you go there, you can send me a message and I respond to, you know, whoever is, you know, asking questions. And um, I am the runner of that page. So, you know, you can send a message there. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. So that, so that's where you can find. Um, but if you want to learn more about the case, I would highly recommend the free Betty Wilson project page in the featured section. You know, there is the entire class segment without, you know, the whole, um, editing and props. So it is just the class straight through, um, because, for the actual film, it was condensed and summarized, but all the information is there. You have the interview with Betty Wilson as well. You have the documents for my research and you have everything on that page. So you can find me there and that's where you can find information. And obviously you can always watch the documentary on um, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, YouTube TV. And if you're uh, an advertising, uh, if you're somebody who's willing to do it through advertisements, it's free on Tubi. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. Free on Tubi. I like that. That's the right price for me. I'm definitely going <laughs> to go check it out on Tubi. So I appreciate all of that. And listen, man, I appreciate you doing the research for uh, Betty Wilson and uh, putting together this documentary. It's called Finding Betty. I hope all of our listeners go and check it out and hopefully let me know, let you know what they think of the film and then start thinking about different ways on college campuses that they can have viewing parties and start to get the message out. And who knows? I mean, maybe this is the start to get Betty freed. Um, and so uh, I just appreciate the work that you've done. I think this is really good. So thanks so much for being with us today, Gene. Thank you for having me, Michael. I really appreciate this. Yeah, man, it's my pleasure. And to our listening audience, if you like this talk with Gene, make sure that you share it. Make sure that you like it on social media. And we look forward to seeing you on another episode of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.